I know, everybody recommends having some form of gratitude practice, like for instance a gratitude journal. There are countless videos and blogs talking about it. There's even scientific research proving the mental and physical benefits of having a gratitude practice. Yet, instead of writing a gratitude journal, I've decided to keep a non-gratitude journal. Instead of focusing on what I feel grateful for, I've decided to focus on what I don't feel grateful for. I know that might sound a little bit strange and perhaps stupid, but believe it or not, this practice has had a very positive impact on my life. Let me explain. There are a couple of issues that I have with a typical gratitude journal or gratitude list where you list the three or five things that you feel grateful for. The first issue that I have is what are you supposed to do in a moment of crisis? What are you supposed to do when you're in the middle of a breakdown? Do you think you'll be able to focus on the things that you feel grateful for? Maybe you can, and if that's the case, well then probably this video is not for you. But if you're anything like me, in the middle of a crisis, the last thing you'll be able to do is writing a gratitude list. And it doesn't even have to be a crisis. Sometimes even small life problems can create a cascade of negative emotions that stay with us day and night without resolution. But then, if we ignore these emotional reactions and focus instead on the things that we are grateful for, wouldn't that be like sweeping dust under the carpet? Shouldn't we instead try to resolve what we are dealing with first? And the second issue that I have with a gratitude journal is that having to think about what you are grateful for to feel good, in my opinion, is like training yourself to be happy only when you have things to feel happy about. I know, there will always be things that we can feel grateful for, but Personally, I want to train myself to be grateful no matter what. I want to train myself to be happy under any circumstances, in the good and in the bad. So I want a tool that I can use not only when things are going well, but especially in moments of crisis, so that I can learn to cope better with the situation and remain present, calm and balanced. And the tool that I found for this purpose is a non-gratitude journal. So what exactly is a non-gratitude journal? Well, first, a typical gratitude journal or gratitude list is about noticing all the good in your life, feeling grateful for it instead of focusing on what you don't have. Similarly, when I write my non-gratitude journal, I list the things that I don't feel grateful for. But then, of course, I don't go on dwelling on my negative reactions, cultivating more negative emotions. That would be crazy. I do try to experience my emotions fully though, that's a very important first step. But then I use my journal to dig deeper to try to discover what thoughts are making me react in any particular way. And finally, I try to realize if it is necessary to feel this way or if there is an alternative. And guess what? There is always an alternative. We do have the power to change the way we feel in any situation. It's not very easy, but the answer lies in the uncovering of the unconscious thoughts that reside deep in our minds, our beliefs. So the purpose of this non-gratitude journal is to discover the unconscious negative beliefs that are making us react in any particular way. Our beliefs are sort of like the glasses through which we experience reality. Whatever situation I'm going through, I will always interpret it through the filter of my beliefs. My entire personal experience of reality is defined by the beliefs stored in my mind. The good thing is that just by bringing to our conscious awareness the negative beliefs that are holding us back, we can then let them go and replace them with more positive or constructive beliefs. So in practice, how exactly do I write a non-gratitude journal? So let's try a real life exercise of how I actually do my non-gratitude journal. First, instead of asking myself what I'm grateful for today, I literally ask, what I'm not grateful for today. And then I simply start listing the things that I'm not feeling grateful for at the moment. So let's say I'm not grateful that 90% of my viewers are not subscribed to my YouTube channel. Do you get the message? So I might not be very happy about it, but this is really not affecting my day. I'm not thinking about this all day long. So I'm not gonna spend any time uh, trying to explore this. So let's see if we find something else. I'm not grateful that it has taken me more than a month to create and publish this video. As you can see, this is not really a life crisis. 
but it is something that is in my mind and perhaps it's affecting my mood. So I do want to journal more about it. So then I ask myself, how does this make me feel? And here I'm just going to express myself freely without any censorship or without any self-judgment. I feel disappointed with myself because I'm not making the progress that I would like to make. So with these first two questions, I'm simply trying to identify what the problem is and identify what is my emotional reaction to this problem. But here's where the fun begins. So now I'm going to ask myself, how does feeling disappointed serve me? Or in other words, what is the benefit of having this feeling of disappointment? Feeling disappointed motivates me to do something about my situation so that I can be more productive. Now, this is an interesting answer. It's telling me that I believe I need to use disappointment in order to feel motivated to do something about my situation. I'm going to change the question now and see if I get a different response. What would happen if I didn't experience this feeling of disappointment? Perhaps I wouldn't do anything to change my situation and things will remain as they are. So I got pretty much the same answer. Let's see now if we can do something to change my belief. Is it really necessary to feel disappointed in this situation? Is there any alternative? Now with this question, I'm simply going to try to challenge my belief by becoming aware of the consequences of this belief and by noticing the advantages of not having this belief or having a more constructive or positive belief. Feeling disappointed affects my mental clarity and creativity, making it more difficult to be productive. The best thing that I can do to improve my productivity is to remain calm and relaxed. The only motivation that I need to be more productive is simply doing what I love. And just by writing this, this feeling of disappointment or any other emotional reaction that I might have, it might simply fade away. It's that simple. But of course, this takes a lot longer. I mean, this is a simple example. Normally, my answers are going to be a lot more extensive and I might need to ask the same questions over and over again. But usually, by the end of my non-gratitude journal, I might start to feel a lot better compared to when I started. If you're still not sure how to have this sort of dialogue with yourself, I suggest you read the book The Option Method. Unlock your happiness with five simple questions by Bruce DiMarsico. You'll find a link in the description. It's a very clear and easy to read book. When I first started with this type of self-inquiry, I used the option method to ask questions. Nowadays, I do it more freestyle. The questions change depending on the situation. Sometimes the only question that I need to ask is what I'm not grateful for today. And then simply by expressing myself freely in my journal, the answers come and my mindset changes. But in the beginning, I do suggest you use a system like the option method. You might also consider reading the book, Loving What Is, Four Questions That Can Change Your Life by Baron Katie. This book talks about another self-inquiry method known as the work. Both of these methods use a set of questions to uncover the negative beliefs that are holding us back. They are both very simple, yet very powerful. But you gotta put in the time to do the work. This is definitely not a five minute journal. Now, luckily, oftentimes when I ask myself what I'm not grateful for today, I find nothing to complain about. And here's the beauty of this. When that happens, when I realize that I have nothing to complain about, I naturally experience a sense of joy and gratitude without any effort. Especially if the previous days I've been dealing with some issues, but through my non-gratitude journal, I've been able to change my beliefs or my perspective of the situation 
and now I have a very different emotional response. The things that I wasn't feeling grateful for now don't affect me anymore, or I might actually feel more positive about them. This to me is a life changer. Imagine having the power to change our emotional reactions to any situation by simply using a journal to let go of our unconscious negative beliefs. But again, this takes time. If you watched my previous video, you know that my journals are at least 3 pages or 750 words long. And when I have to do self work like this, they can be more than 2000 words long. Compare that to a couple of minutes that might take you to write the 5 things that you feel grateful for. A non gratitude journal is really about self work. And self work takes time. But it's totally worth it, in my opinion, because it's not just about feeling good. The point is that whenever we're having a negative emotional response, we're simply not living life to the fullest and in the present. We are instead running away from the present. So by paying attention to the things that we're not grateful for, we have the opportunity to work on ourselves and change our perspective of the situation. And this, I believe, has had a much bigger impact on my life than simply writing a gratitude list. This might not be so surprising since Andrew Huberman already concluded in his podcast that gratitude lists are not very effective. But anyway, I'm not saying that you shouldn't keep a gratitude journal. It takes less than 5 minutes. There is no reason not to do it. But maybe at the same time you can also give this non-gratitude journal a try and see how it works in your life. And if you do so, please let me know what is your experience. Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Alright guys, that's all for today. I'll see you in the next one. Oh,